I think that everyone, yes, everyone can learn to code. I think that you sitting at home may think that learning to program is some really high unattainable wall. And I don't think that's the case. When do we learn best? We learn best when we're super engaged and super interested in something. For example, right, maybe you're more of an English person. And so the reading and the writing essays is super intuitive and fun for you. And it's easy for you to bang that out. But then you get to your math homework and you're just not that same level of engaged as you are when you're reading your novels for English class. This engagement, I think, is often lacking in like STEM specific fields when it comes to the way that we present information to people. What I wanna do is I wanna give you a roadmap from starting at absolutely nothing to creating your very first Discord bot that you can show off to impress your friends and give you something really tangible to actually feel great about the fact that you're learning to program. A lot of the time people will look up how to code and they'll find a super highly rated YouTube video and you'll run into this eight hour long timestamp. And that's a really high bar to buy into. And maybe you'll find something different, a different resource. And you know, you've got this nine minute video, which that's pretty good. But then they ask you a single multiple choice question to make sure that you're following along for that nine minutes and then move on. And you haven't really actually reinforced a lot of that learning. But maybe you find something different that's literally just like pick one of these two option style questions and that's all of the learning. This is not great, okay? I'm being intentionally unfair here because all it takes is for the wall to seem a little too high and people will just stop. They will simply stop trying to learn because they're not engaged, they don't feel like the difficulty level is correct for them and they're not feeling like what they're learning is real and useful. I want to be clear, there's no perfect solution to this problem and many of the things that I just talked about might work for you, in which case, go for it. The next thing I want to say is I am absolutely not sponsored by the things that I'm about to talk about today. Uh, I'm just putting that out there because this is going on YouTube and who knows, people are always super sus when someone references like concrete products. Not sponsored at all. This is just my personal opinion about what I would use to learn to program. So when I learned to program, I learned to program using Codecademy, okay? And this was a while ago. First thing about Codecademy that I noticed is that they get something really, really right about the feedback loop required for you to learn to program. And that's the fact that they have these nice, short, little lectures over here on the side that are self-paced. You can read through it at whatever pace you like. They're not particularly long. And then they immediately give you a challenge to be able to reinforce that learning and make sure that you are writing real Python code. And it reinforces the ideas and it makes it super easy to feel like you're slowly, slowly climbing that hill. Some of these are gonna be challenging. They will push you outside of your comfort zone, which I think is important to learn any new skill. Now there's only one problem with Codecademy and that's that their Python 3 course is paid. It's locked behind their subscription service. And while I'm sure this is a great course, I can't only recommend paid things. There's so many great free resources out there. So this might be great for you. And if you have a little bit of extra money lying around, go for it. I'm sure it's a great class. But one thing that's nice is that their Python 2 class is still entirely free. They're a little bit tricky about this. They want you to think that these projects are locked and paid, but they're actually totally optional. When you get to these things, you can go back out into the syllabus and just go to the next thing that's labeled lesson. Now, I'm going to get ahead of the comments already, okay? Python 2 is dead, and I mean like super dead. Python 2 has been end of life since 2020. Well, what are the differences between Python 2 and Python 3 that a beginner is gonna run into? Let's see. So in Python 2, the print looks like this. And in Python 3, the print looks like this. And to be clear, this is valid syntax in Python 2. So you can do this from day one. In Python 2, you maybe are gonna run into this on Codecademy, maybe they might use this for loop syntax. And let's see, what does that look like in Python 3? And to be clear, this is also valid syntax in Python 2. 
I'm not worried about these differences, okay? I wanna be clear, when I learned, I did this exact thing. I took this exact course. I remember the lessons. I immediately, after completing, started working in Python 3, like started building up my own personal projects in Python 3. I did not run into many problems, okay? And I'm confident that you won't run into many problems either. So now let's say that you finished this. You finished the Python 2 course and you are feeling great about it. I promised you a Discord bot and a Discord bot I shall provide. There is this great, great, great tutorial on Free Code Camp about building your first Discord bot in Python. And it's really nice because one of the things that they recommend is they recommend you use something called Repelit. And Repelit lets you run Python code in the browser exactly like you do on Codecademy. And this is going to be super familiar for you. And it lowers the barrier to moving on to that next step of writing personal projects. The only problem here is that there are lots of other differences when it comes to writing something that's more complicated like a Discord bot. Okay. There is going to be a gap between where the Code Academy course ends and where this picks up. Now, in the future, I really want to put out some content about how to bridge this gap a little bit smoother. But for the time being, I think it's still important that you try this. One of the important things about programming is getting comfortable being uncomfortable. You see it on stream all the time that I constantly run into these problems that I have literally no idea how to solve. OK, and the important thing is you cannot panic. And here's the part where I shamelessly plug my discord. I will help you if you join my discord. I will do everything in my power to help you bridge this gap and get you to your first discord bot. I want to make sure that people feel like they have a resource that they can turn to. So the Discord is gonna be linked in the description down below. And for all of you in chat, it's exclamation point Discord. Now there's one other problem with this tutorial. And the last problem with this tutorial is that you're gonna run into this section where they talk about getting the bot to be able to run continuously. And what this means is that because you're writing code in the browser, when you close out of that browser, your Discord bot's gonna turn off. So they have a few solutions that they recommend to this problem. The first one is they recommend that you sign up for a paid version of Repelit. And that's an option. And if you have extra money lying around, I'm sure it's a great option. They also recommend this uptime robot service and the uptime robot service could be great. They say that it's totally free, but the problem is I haven't used it myself. And so I don't feel comfortable leaving you here. When you get to this section about running the bot continuously, if uptime robot doesn't work for you, you can just close out of the tutorial entirely, download Python onto your computer and just run it from a terminal. You'll copy your bot into a file, call it something.py and just run it from the terminal. And as long as this terminal is open, then your bot will be alive. So, okay, there it is. There is your path from zero to discord bot. And I really hope that you do try it. I think that so many people, especially when it comes to STEM related things, feel like the wall is too high. And I believe that it's because we do not do a good job of this, giving you a path from not knowing anything to something that you can be proud of having made. So let me know how this goes for you. And I hope to see the results in my discord.